All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's 11.06 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, June the 1st, the year 2017. I've just shuffled the cards, and I'm going to cut the deck. Take this out card, turn it over. I like this card. Not that I haven't liked the cards in the past, but I really like this card. It's remember who you are. What can be said about remembering who you are? A lot. And before I get too far, let me get my glasses. Or something. Okay. Here's the deal. Or at least, I am HL, in my humble opinion. As you look over your life, there are things that you have been told, uh, expectations placed upon you, um, things that in some cases you were okay with, and in some cases you weren't okay with. Um, some of the things that you've been told that most of you would not be okay with hearing or tolerating. You're ugly. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're not smart enough. You're too smart for your own damn good. You're stupid. You're clumsy. You're, you walk funny. You got bad breath. Your teeth are funny. On and on and on. And in the case of some of these just plain, outright, hurtful insults, it's people who are generally your peers. Folks you went to grade school with, folks that were in the neighborhood you grew up in, folks you went to high school with, maybe college, although by the time you get to college, you're, if not high school, you're probably getting pretty sick of hearing some of this crap. But then you have situations where you're dealing with people in authority, and some of these circumstances take place during what I call the formative years of your life, where you are more easily swayed, more mentally malleable, um, more negatively influenced by these things. You hear things like, you'll never be good enough to the, for that, you'll never amount to so-and-so, why can't you be like so-and-so? Here's why, because you're not so-and-so. You're you. And you kind of feel like a lot of the, uh, the angst that we encounter is because we are attempting to, on some level, fulfill somebody else's expectation of who we are. And believe me, what I'm going to say, what I'm about to say, I realize, I know full well, it sounds very glib and quite trite. But the fact of the matter is, you're you. There's not another single person like you in all of creation in eternity. This point, this time, this juncture of where we are right here and now, you're you. And the primary person who makes a difference as for who you become further and who you are currently is you. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some rules and regs we, we're, we're taught uh, younger, a little older, occasionally reinforced by the um, encounter with someone from the law enforcement community. Not necessarily arrest, but, you know, you get the hide scared off you or something. That sort of thing, that's one thing. But just who you are at the core of your being is who you are. And, frankly, the only people or beings or persons that have the right to change that 
are you? And I hold this to be especially true if you are working to do something good and positive for the cosmos at large. Fill in the blank however you want. You want to volunteer, you want to read to the blind, you want to uh, bring shut-ins meals or spend some time with folks who ain't doing as well as you. These are all good things. But I, I, in my life, I've, I've heard things to the tune of, oh, why do you waste your time with him? Or, what are you bothering with her for? She's not good enough for you, or she's below you. And again, we're back to this someone telling you something that is not only not good for you, it's not good for the person you're dealing with. Yeah, there are some nasty people out there. Not good people. But even they, somewhere at the core of their being, they've got to know, or I hope they realize that they can change for the better. So why not? Why not? And I think uh, when I say they can change for the better, what I'm getting at is who you are as an individual. I'm going to borrow a phrase from uh, Wayne Dwyer and it's, it's, it's caught my attention since I first heard it way back when. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And I pray I got that right. So, all this, this junk, this minutia that we have had foisted upon us that has not done anything in the area of build us up, strengthen us, enhance us, you got to ask yourself, why are you listening to this? Why are you putting up with this? And honestly, you don't have to be mean, although in a few cases it does feel good to just tell someone exactly where to go. Been there, done that. Very pleasant experience. Um, why put up with it? See, within you, you have something known as free will. Um... And I'm, I'm getting a, a little bit off topic and a little bit in the my belief system, but I'm not trying to get religious on you. I ain't here to preach. As the uh, the great spirit put us together, created us, made us, we're the only ones that have free will. To my knowledge, the angels don't have free will. You know, great maker says it, they do it. That's the end of it. You know, it, it there there have been a few cases throughout history where. People have been, um, shall we say, euphemistically advised to do something by the great maker, and the maker's like, or the person's like, no, we can do that. And I bring this to you because of the notion that if the great spirit, the creator, the maker, God Almighty, however you want to specify this being is in your life, doesn't have the power to tell you what to do because you have free will choice why on earth would we permit ourselves to be put under the burden of someone who's just telling us stuff that does no good for us we don't have to we're not obligated to and again, you haven't got to be nasty about it but you know some people don't get the word no and it's like mm, you can spin that in as many directions as you want some of them are really quite ugly. Don't go too far. Um, that's my suggestion, not a command. It's like if we have free will, why would we mess with anyone else's free will? I mean, do you realize how powerful that is, what a gift that is? You have a choice. It's like a, a harmonica teacher that I've encountered online says to us, when you're playing a harmonica, you got one of two things you can do. You can blow, or you can draw. When you're making a decision, you generally wind up with one of two ways you can go, this way or that. And depending, you know, your circumstances will alter to what it is you've done. But you're a much more powerful being than you're led to believe. And I, I felt for years that that is the large part of why there is this uh, 
this want to, I would call it mass dominate, mass control the whole of humanity. I think that the people who are avatars, the people who are leaders, um, the people who are standouts, and I'm, I'm speaking in the positive spin here, okay, I don't even want to touch the other direction, um, because I don't think in the long haul that does anything good for anybody, not themselves, not humanity. So I want to look at this and spin this in a positive direction. Those people are told things like, oh, well, you can't because. And they're like, you're right. Um, right now, as I'm speaking, I, I don't know how many of you out there know who Billy Joel is. He's, he's a hell of a singer, performer, songwriter. Dude rocks. Billy Joel, I don't know how many years ago, was basically posed with a, a decision he had to make. He was told, I think at the end of high school, I believe his senior year, that he had to go to summer school. And whoever told him this, his, his response was something to the tune of, uh, I don't think so. See, me and, me and the fellas are going to go over here, and we're going to make music. And Billy Joel has been at it ever since. It's like, what's the point of that? The point of that is that Billy Joel had a decision to make. He could have either bowed to the pressure of what he was being told and had that authoritarian junk foisted upon him and listened to it. And if he had gone that way, I kind of feel like he might not have been who he became. Uh, other people have had decisions to make. Madame Curie, my goodness. She was a woman, or, yeah, back in the day. And she made some very important scientific discoveries. But if she had listened to things such as, you're a girl, girls aren't good at math, girls aren't good at science, you can't know enough, you're a woman, yada yada, where it might we be? Who's another example? I mean, there's probably hundreds of them out there. I'm just dragging my brain here to come up with uh, examples that are, are very germane um, to this conversation. Gandhi. The little brown man who bought an empire to its knees. He didn't fire a shot. He didn't raise a hand. Hell, I don't even think he even raised his voice. I'm unclear on that, so don't quote me. But my point is, if he had succumbed to the ideologies that were being foisted in, in and around his time, things such as an eye for an eye, I believe he said, uh, or someone said, I forgive me, an eye for an eye and the whole world will soon be blind, we might not have had a Gandhi. If, uh, oh, come on. And I really should know this man's name. No, I'll use this guy instead. Frederick Douglass had listened to the ideology of his time and just gone along to get along, where might we be? Martin Luther King, same thing. Malcolm X, same thing. And I'm not trying to be colorblind here. These are simply, from my life experience, um, the names that pop into my head. The point of all this is that who you are at the core of your being is who you are. And it would do all of us well to learn who this actual being is and to trust in who you are as a person, trust your gut, your instincts, your inclinations, and move forward with it. And not to not permit anything or anyone to tell you otherwise because it, it's kind of like being robbed of your soul you were given you were created for a, a specific purpose in the cosmos and you might not think that you're you know you're anything special but you are we're all unique like snowflakes to uh to coin a phrase and in the end as we all 
grow and move and evolve in that direction for our respective selves, we do great things. Never underestimate who you are. Never underestimate what you be can become. Your yesterday does not equal your tomorrow. Maybe you had a bad day. Maybe an off minute. But that doesn't dictate what's coming down the pike. You could have that brilliant flash of insight that, heck, might cure cancer. Although, don't get me started on that soapbox. I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I have to touch on it now that I've mentioned it. My father and I used to go round and round about this. See, me personally, I'm under the opinion that we already have the cure for cancer. We have the cure for everything. But there are, shall we say, yes, conspiracy buff coming out here. Um, there are certain forces that don't really want that to get out. And at the heart of the why is money. It's silly. We can cure this stuff. We can heal. We can mend. So why aren't we? Who is pulling the strings from behind the curtain and not giving all of us across the board, globally, access to good health? That, that's a road you could start on and you'd, you'd be there for years on end. There's no reason, I think, for us to be going through this. Uh, the world's not perfect, we're not perfect, and I get that. But I think what we should all strive towards, and this is only my opinion, is becoming a better us, improving who we are. Uh, to borrow an ideology from something known as Ho'oponopono, which loosely translated is make it right, the further you get along in healing yourself and making yourself better, the further the world gets along in terms of being healed and becoming a better place. You have more power than you think. You're much better than perhaps you give yourself credit for. And you have a choice in your life as to who you want in your life, who builds you up, and who you don't want in your life that tears you down. You haven't got to be mean about it. But if someone's not in your corner, backing you up, supporting you in what you're doing, and again, you know, we're focused on doing good things and empowering things and better things, then why are they there? You don't have to be mean about it. I, I, I need to say that over and over. Because sometimes you you have a parting of the ways with certain people and uh, it can get ugly it can get very ugly because they want to hold on to their ideology of what they think you should be but all of us should be who we are you know you're a rocket scientist you flip burgers you sell hot dogs on the corner, uh, you're a teacher, you're an artist, you're a musician, you're a barber. Oh boy, barbers. I'm sorry, I have to touch this, touch on this. I had a certain teacher back in high school. And I don't know how many times in the course of the, the time I had dealings with this particular teacher, his opening line would be when he was returning our papers. So you guys are getting ready for college, huh? Must be barber college. And I don't really get where he was coming from because the majority of the barbers I've dealt with in my lifetime have been very sagacious souls. Good listeners, able to point out things that maybe you might want to look into to help you better yourself. And I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been so tempted so many times to go to several of these barbers and say to them, you know, I got this teacher and he's talking smack about barbers and I don't really get it. And I always envisioned having the barbers invite him to their shop 
And then once he got in the door and was in the chair, close the doors, draw the drapes, and start sharpening that straight razor. It's like, so, we understand you have something that you don't like about barbers. You have something against us. You think we're inferior on some level. You think we're not good enough on some level. Why don't you explain this to us? Because we'd like to be enlightened. I never did. I wanted to. I wanted to really bad. But I didn't. My point is that this guy took a profession that more than has its place in any society. One of the things that makes you feel better is you go into a barber shop, you get some stuff trimmed off the side and off the top, and you're looking better, you're feeling sharper. What's wrong with that? Nothing. How is that something that you want to put out there in an insulting manner? I have no idea, and I never got this guy's motivation. I'd be guessing to say maybe his dad was a barber and his father's father was just like, oh, you're just a barber. I don't know. I just, I don't get it. But it's just one of those things where I look at it and I say, those people were being genuine to who they were and who they are. What's wrong with that? Eh. Well, I guess that's, uh, That feels like about everything. Um, No other examples are coming to my mind at the moment. I hope you haven't minded me ramble too much. Um, But just this whole remember who you are, I want to say as a thought, as a suggestion, as an offering, that who we are as beings truly are beings of light. We're energy. And the more we remember that, the more we act on that and behave on that, and move ourselves in that direction, the the better we will all become. Now, having said all this, I'm going to read what the card says. It says, remember who you are. Archangel Michael, you are a powerful, living, and creative child of God. You are very loved. I don't think I could have even vaguely said it better myself. Not even close. Remember who you are, people. Remember the core of who you are. This has been Scott Albert. Wishing you peace and wellness. Namaste.